as a, an international official not based in Kiev, I'm bringing with me a very special perspective uh, uh, that makes me, uh, gives me sort of mixed feelings. I'm, I'm uh, uh, coming out of the uh, a very special experience, that of sharing uh, with Ukraine the work of one year of chairmanship of the organization, uh, working with the president and with the prime minister that are no longer around, and uh, seeing from, from uh, somewhat different perspective a, a process uh, which got me increasingly involved uh, in, a, in a way that I was not expecting when I started. Last year I traveled twice to Crimea, for instance, um, uh, went there for Artec, which uh, was turned into a kind of an OSC model conference. Uh, I went to the Yalta uh, security conference as well, where we discussed all sorts of things, but Crimea, uh, strangely enough. I, I was here in November. I, I had lots of meetings with Füle, where we were discussing the partnership and also the impact on the OSCE agenda of that. And I remember giving a speech here in Kiev in early November at an economic forum, where we were looking at the connections and the follow-up uh, uh, between Vilnius and the OSCE ministerial in December. The next thing I knew, I was here for a ministerial uh, where we were having a rather complicated debate uh, here early in December, and where. I, I, I left uh, the ministers here and I went to Maidan walking uh, through the uh, square and talking to people to, to have a good understanding of what was going on. And, and now I have five sets of or even more different operations which I will describe in a minute, uh, none of which was, was even in our, in our minds in December when we had the ministerial. So it's all improvised and all uh, developed uh, uh, in a way uh, to, to respond to fast-moving events. Now, one of the analyses that we're making is where is this all coming from? And, and, and I would start from the larger debate that we have in the OSC. In the OSC, we have a debate now for a, a few years on uh, trying to build a broad Eurasian and Euro-Atlantic, as we call it, security community, creating a security space uh, where there are uh, common rules and shared goals and, and uh, where there are common security interests. And as, we, uh, as this discussion developed, we started hitting some problems. And, and actually, this was during the Ukrainian chairmanship last year. We started hearing talk about uh, 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 groups uh, uh, and, and, uh, and areas of interest or spheres of interest emerging. Uh, in this space, uh, um, uh, uh, seeing a, 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 a growing uh, Eurasian space and the growing Eurasian space somehow in competition with the Euro-Atlantic, uh, both on the security side, uh, a, 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 NATO, uh, a NATO space and, and the European Union role. So we saw increasingly a dynamic of, uh, of competition emerging in this, in this process. A dynamic of competition which resulted in showing the risk that uh, fault lines could, could emerge. And this is exactly, I think, what we are discussing today. The fact that these uh, fault lines uh, have been increasingly appearing, and this, and this is something we have witnessed, I would say, over the last couple of years, increasingly clearly uh, on, uh, uh, on our maps. And, uh, uh, and the Crimea issue has made this uh, dramatically evident in front, in front of everybody. One of, one of the first issues we are confronted with is where, where are these, these fault lines? And, uh, and the relations between these groups that we hear about, is this resulting in attempts to try to define uh, uh, fault lines and to design them, draw them on the map? And uh, are countries, and a country like Ukraine, going to get caught into that, into that kind of effort of, of redrawing maps and redrawing spheres of influence and what is the impact on, uh, on that. Now, two words on, on Crimea, first of all, because this, I think, is a, is a major uh, um, uh, element of attention. Uh, from the OSCE, and as you know, the OSCE is, is a broad organization, it's more of a framework, in a sense, within all key relevant players are acting, Ukraine, uh, Russia, uh, US, the Europeans, Turkey, etc. Um, so the, the, the OSC is a, is a neutral framework, but the neutral framework has strong rules and there's principles that, uh, that govern uh, the action and the, and the interaction within this, uh, uh, within this framework. Now, uh, Crimea appeared on a map at some point uh, 
uh, with uh, a, a request that we never considered because it was not coming from legitimate uh, authorities here of a monitoring of a referendum. And, uh, uh, and that was immediately something we uh, replied to saying we uh, are there to guarantee, to follow, to support democratic processes. We uh, do not see this element because it doesn't reflect the, uh, uh, the, Crimean, uh, the Ukrainian constitution. Uh, but then we saw developments on the ground and we started looking at the uh, set of tools we have, including documents, for instance, regu regulating relations to the political military sphere. So uh, military observers from, uh, from our countries, uh, from OSCE countries, came uh, and tried to go to Crimea to observe developments. Uh, we sent uh, special envoys who failed, in fact, to have, uh, to have interaction with authorities there. So we saw ourselves in a situation where events were happening on, on the ground, uh, wh where these events were taking a course uh, that uh, uh, was interpreted uh, by most. Of course, this was a divisive issue within the organization, and we heard and we keep hearing different uh, interpretations, different stories, as you hear, as you see it in the, the UN, and the OSC, in a way, is no different to that. Um, uh, but we saw uh, a, an element of uh, imbalance or selectivity in the interpretation and in the balance between the key principles that govern uh, the work of the organization. Uh, the balance between uh, self-determination uh, on the one hand, but on the other, uh, guaranteeing uh, sovereignty, territorial integrity uh, of countries, uh, guaranteeing borders where they are. Uh, so this is uh, in itself now uh, creating a problem that we'll have to deal with in future, that is, is this balance now changed? Is this going to have impact in other areas? Uh, around the world, and I'm not talking necessarily of Ukraine, but, but what does minute. this mean? One minute. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the other element is uh, uh, the impact that this has on the non-proliferation uh, uh, system, the security guarantees, uh, the issue that you raised. What is the future of non-proliferation regime worldwide if security guarantees become less credible? So these are issues that are game changers in a way for the international community, for our discourse, and we'll have I think we are entering a new phase in the debate on security. Uh, what is important from a Ukrainian perspective, I'll go back to my Ukraine uh, experience in, in, in last year and the things I've seen also traveling through the country. I think Ukraine should try as much as possible not to get caught into this broader uh, game. Uh, uh, we are here as international community to assist. Uh, I think uh, Ukraine went through a very divisive process politically, internally. Uh, it needs now to move, to regroup, uh, uh, to move in the direction of an inc inclusive dialogue. I think that is the key imperative as far as I see it, and this is something that our operations here, the monitoring mission, uh, uh, the dialogue facilitation uh, uh, program, uh, should facilitate and should encourage this strong internal dialogue around key projects like the work on constitution and the reforms. Thank I you. think this is really the challenge in the next phase and we as international community should be assisting uh, Ukrainians in uh, uh, working together and moving, uh, uh, moving uh, f the, the, the political process from the streets uh, to around the table and in the past.